Welcome to this week's show of the SEC Sports Guys. I'm Hunter Ames, joined here with Jason Lee, taking a look at uh, this week in the SEC. Uh, today's show, we're going to mainly focus on the uh, bracket that just came out uh, this past Sunday, uh, featuring the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the South Bracket. Uh, it's as follows. Kentucky will take on the winner of the Mississippi Valley State uh, Western Kentucky game. Iowa State will take on UConn. Wichita State will take on Virginia Commonwealth. Indiana will take on New Mexico State. UNLV will take on Colorado. Baylor will be playing South Dakota State. Notre Dame versus Xavier. And Duke versus Lehigh. Uh, Jason, we'll go ahead and start. Kentucky uh, out of the SEC picking out the number one seed here. Uh, we're going to face the, uh, the winner of the Mississippi Valley State, Western Kentucky. I don't, I don't think it really matters which one they're going to face, but uh, let's briefly just talk about them picking up that number one seed. Yeah, we've followed Kentucky all season long and, you know, go undefeated in the conf conference season uh, by, you know, no stretch of the imagination. Did anybody think that they would be anything less than a one seed here? So no surprise there. Been the most consistent team all all year long. Uh, won't have a tough matchup here um, in the first round. Obviously, a one seed has never lost in the NCAA tournament, but as we get further in the bracket and us talking later in the show, I feel like they got a, a you know kind of a raw deal being the top seed of the rest of the tournament. I think there's some other teams that is going to give them some uh, tough games later in the tournament, such as a, a Connecticut, a Duke. Uh, so they, they don't have just an easy an easy you know time all the way to the Final Four. They're going to they're going to have to be sure that they're ready to go each and every game. All right, you mentioned on that um, Duke in the same bracket as them playing Lehigh in the first round. Uh, how do you feel about Duke being in that same bracket with Kentucky? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the committee looked at, you know, Duke Duke is the probably the, the fourth of the two seeds, which means they're probably the, you know, the lowest ranked of the two seeds. So you put them in with the highest rank of the one seed, which is Kentucky. So that's the thinking there. I also think that it's no coincidence that it's the 20th year anniversary of one of the biggest uh, shots in college basketball history, Christian Leitner uh, hitting a buzzer beater to beat Kentucky. So I think the committee's kind of looking at history here too to kind of, you know, on the 20th anniversary. Um, but I think that that's a matchup problem for Kentucky. You know, as, uh, you know, Kentucky all year long has been known, you know, as a, as a good scoring team. Duke can also score. Kentucky's real big inside. But one thing Kentucky has given up is the three-point shot, and that's Duke's go-to go -to thing. Um, they can shoot the three well. They got four or five guys who can hit the three. So I think if both can make it that far, and and you do see a Duke uh, a Duke Kentucky matchup there, I think that's that's going to be a big matchup problem for Kentucky. All right. You also mentioned uh, UConn will be playing Iowa State in the first round. Uh, briefly, just talk a little bit about that and uh, the, the trouble that Kentucky out of round one is going to have to face going against UConn. Yeah, I really don't like the second round matchup for Kentucky. I think that they're a more talented team than Connecticut. I think that they're they're a lot better and they've been more consistent. Connecticut is a team who kind of struggled early in the conference season. They got things together here a little bit late, been playing well the last two weeks and going into the conference tournament. But I think that, you know, this is a Connecticut team. Jim Calhoun is one of the best in the business. Connecticut's a team who, you know, they're the defending national champion from last year and they're very experienced. They got guys who are used to being in the tournament. They're, they're not going to be, you know, shell shocked and, you know, just, you know, flabbergasted at, at what's, go, what's going on, all the big lights surrounding them. Uh, so I think that Kentucky will be okay here, but I, but I think it's a, a, a huge matchup athletic wise for Kentucky. All right. Another big uh, matchup that I saw here in round one, Wichita State and Virginia Commonwealth. Uh, just briefly talk about that. We normally don't talk about other teams outside of the SEC, but let's talk about this one. Yeah, I think that these are two teams. This is what the NCAA tournament's all about. These are, you know, the Cinderella teams that people like to say these are two small conference teams. But VCU, the last couple years, ha have, have been very good in the tournament, got all the way to the Final Four a year ago. So they're a team that's got a little bit more experience. They did lose a couple uh, key players from last season, but they got, you know, they got several guys back who have that tournament experience. I, I I fully expect them to, to pull the upset here. Uh, VCU's a 12 seed going up against a 5 seed of Wichita State, but I think that they could pull the upset there, and then that would give them a second round matchup with uh, most likely against Indiana, which would be one of the best games probably in the tournament. All right, let's go ahead and make our picks on the South. Um, Kentucky uh, facing that winner of Mississippi Valley State or Western Kentucky. 
I'm going Kentucky. Yeah, I'm obviously, I, I don't think Kentucky's going to have any problems there in the first round. All right, and the next one, Iowa State and UConn. Who do you have in this? Yeah, I think this is good. I think this is going to be an interesting game. I think Iowa State is is a much much improved team. The eight nine seed, you don't get any closer than that seeding wise. I think it's going to be a good game, but I I think that uh, UConn with their athletic ability and their size, big guys down low, seven footer right in the middle. I think they'll take care of business. All right, I pick UConn as well. I don't have that big explanation that you have, but I'm just going to go with them. Uh, we talked about the uh, VCU and uh, Wichita State game. Who do you have in this one? I've got VCU. I think they'll pull the upset here. I, th I think all because of just the experience being in the tournament final four a year ago. I think they can pull it off. All right, three for three. I have VCU as well. Uh, Indiana, New Mexico State. We didn't really talk about this one, but uh, who do you have in this one? Four seed and the 13 seed. Indiana's been playing well this season. They're, before Vanderbilt beat Kentucky in the conference championship, Indiana was the only team to beat Kentucky. So I think that, you know, they they're setting themselves up well for the tournament. I think they take care of business here the first round. Okay, and I also have uh, Indiana there. UNLV taking on Colorado, a six seed and 11 seed. Who do you have? UNLV is a team that's been surprising people all year long, very guard oriented, up and down the floor, scores a lot of points. I think that they blow Colorado out here and look to for a big time matchup in the second round. I don't know if I'm picking right or not, but UNLV, I have them as well. We'll see how this keeps going. Uh, Baylor, number three seed, taking on 14 seed, uh, South Dakota State. Who do you have? Yeah, Baylor, Baylor's a strong team. Baylor's, Baylor's another team that's very quick, likes to get up and down the floor, very fast-paced team. I don't think they'll have any problems here first round. Okay, good deal. I also have Baylor. Uh, Notre Dame, seven seed, number uh, against 10 seed Xavier. How are you feeling here? I think this is going to be one of the best teams uh, or the best games actually in the tournament. I think that uh, it's contrasting the styles. Notre Dame tries to slow you down, get the ball inside. Xavier plays 100 miles an hour up and down the floor like a few of these teams we've already talked about. I think the team that dictates the pace of the game is going to win. As of right now, I'm going with Notre Dame over Xavier. Yeah, I wanted to go with Xavier, uh, and then I just I flipped Notre Dame. I'm going to go with them as well. Uh, and then the last, number two seed Duke versus 15 seed Lehigh. Um, I just see Duke in this one. Uh, yeah. Lehigh, welcome to the tournament, but going home after the first. That's right. I don't think Lehigh can match up well with Duke at all, and I think if Notre Dame gets past Xavier, I think that'll be a very intriguing matchup with Duke and Notre Dame in the second round. All right, all our picks were exactly the same there in the south bracket. When we come back from break, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, west bracket. Welcome back to the SEC Sports Guys. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at your uh, Western bracket. Starting with Michigan State will be taking on Brooklyn. Uh, Memphis will be taking on St. Louis. New Mexico will be taking on Long Beach State. Louisville will be taking on Davidson. Murray State will be taking on Colorado State. Marquette will be taking on the winner of the BYU-Iona game. Florida will be taking on Virginia. And Missouri will be taking on Norfolk State. Uh, Jason, I'll go ahead and start with, uh, we have SEC team in there. Florida taking on Virginia. Should be a good matchup. Uh, how you how you feeling on this one? Florida Florida's a team where you know they've got Virginia coming up in the first round as you said, but Florida's a team who's kind of struggled the last couple weeks and didn't have the best showing in the conference tournament as well. They they were looking to get into the finals, uh, uh, get into the finals of the SEC tournament. It didn't happen. Uh, Florida's just going to have to rely on what they what they've been doing all year long. They've been one of the best shooting teams in the country. They're going to have to bring bring their best shooting game uh, here in the tournament. Uh, they're going to have to play a lot better defense. The defense is what's let them down here the last couple weeks. So they're going to have to bring the defense. I don't think that the Virginia game is going to be a huge problem for them. Florida's a seven seed. Virginia's a ten seed. I think Florida can get past that. But you're looking at a second round matchup against Missouri, who's one of the best teams in the country as a two seed. So I think Florida's really going to have to not look ahead here. You've got to take care of Virginia. But you've definitely, you definitely got to get the defense ready to go against Missouri in the second round. Another game I want to talk about, eight seed uh, Memphis taking on nine seed uh, St. Louis. Um, talk about this game just a little bit and maybe who you're favoring in this one? St. Louis is a team that a lot of people don't know about. They got a nine seed for a reason. They're 25 and seven on the year. Very, very good, se very good season so far. Uh, and this is a team that that. Uh, Coached by Rick Majerus. A lot of people know him from his days at Utah. He used to get Utah into the tournament every single year. So he's a very good coach there, one of the best in the country. Memphis, uh, some uh, out of Conference USA, won their conference tournament, gets in there as a nine seed. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the best games in the tournament. I think Memphis is, is uh, more talented than uh, St. Louis. I think you got two of the best uh, coaches in the, in the country here going 
head to head. But if you're that eight or nine seed, you know, as, as hard as you got to work in the first round, that second round matchup is against a one seed. They're going to have Michigan State the first round. So a tough task there, but I think this is one of the better games of the tournament. Uh, and another game that I don't know if it's impressive to you or not, but it's impressive to me, the Louisville-Davidson game. Um, what are you thinking in this one? Yeah, Davidson's a team who usually who usually gets in the tournament. Uh, some, you know, depending on how many how many seniors, there's usually a senior laden group. So depending on how many veterans they got on the team, tells you how they're going to do in the tournament. Louisville's a team who's just playing just red hot here the last two or three weeks. Did very well in the Big East Big East tournament. Won won the actually won the tournament this weekend. So Louisville's a team who's coming in with a lot of momentum. I don't think they'll have any problem with Davidson. I think Louisville will take that game. All right, are there any other games? in this western bracket that you want to point out? I think another one is the Colorado State, Murray State. Uh, this is again two teams that probably don't get a lot of national recognition. Murray State is actually a six seed which is very high for a team like Murray State but they are 30 and one on the year. Had an excellent season, only lost to Tennessee State on the year. Only one, one, record, uh, one loss on the record. The thing for Murray State coming into this game and coming into the tournament is can they prove that, that their record is not a fluke? Obviously they've played in a small or conference, but can they prove that they can play with the big boys and, and show that they've got the potential to get it done? All right, let's go ahead and make our picks. Uh, Michigan State against Brooklyn. How you feeling? No problem there. Number one seed's never lost in the history of the tournament. I don't think it's going to happen here. I got Michigan State. I, I do as well. Uh, Memphis, St. Louis. We talked about this one a little bit. Who do you have in this? Yeah, I mentioned this earlier. I think this is going to be one of the best games of the tournament, but in the end, I think Memphis gets it done against St. Louis. We're finally going to go against each other. I'm going to pick St. Louis in this one. Um, I don't know. We'll just see. Uh, New Mexico, Long Beach State. This this is an intriguing matchup. This is two two teams who are very equal in talent. Uh, Long Beach State. I think the difference here is Long Beach State is one of the best three point shooting teams in the country. I think if they get knock down the shots, I think they can pull the pull the upset here. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Long Beach State here. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna go uh, New Mexico here. We're different here in the Western bracket. Uh, Davidson and Louisville. I know you talked about this one. I kind of. I have an idea where you're headed with this one, but yeah, Davidson's had a good year, but I think Louisville is just too strong. I mean, they're way way too athletic. They're really going to have to. They're really going to want to dictate the fast fast pace that they like to play. I think Louisville knocks them off. I pick Davidson. I think uh, they did win the uh, the Big East championship, and uh, I think Davidson's going to take advantage of uh, knocking them off. Maybe they. Louisville coming to this not prepared for them uh, as a lower seed team. I don't know. We'll see. Murray State, Colorado State. Who you got? Actually, I had Colorado State coming into the show, but I'm kind of changing my mind here the more that we're talking. Uh, Murray State has just been on a roll, 30-1, and one, as we said earlier. I, I think they're going to be the team. There's always at least one or two teams in the tournament that just make the run out of nowhere, and nobody saw it coming. I think this year is the year for Murray State. I think you looked at my sheet because <laughs> I'm going with Murray State as well. Uh, Marquette will be taking on the winner of the BYU-Iona game. Uh, I'm just going to go Marquette. I don't care who wins that game, but who do you have? Yeah, Marquette not going to have a problem here. Too, too talented, too athletic. Uh, we talked about the Florida-Virginia game. Uh, I think I know where you're going as well with this one, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think the Florida Gators get it done against Virginia. Uh, obviously a tough second round matchup in, in Missouri if they can get there, uh, but I think Florida gets it done against the Cavaliers. I also won SEC with that one, Florida. Uh, Missouri, Norfolk State. Where are you headed? Yeah, not going to be a problem here. In fact, I think Missouri is one of the truly the best teams in the country. I wouldn't have been a surprise if they got a one seed, but they're the top of the two seeds here. No problem. First round, probably looking at Florida second round. All right, good deal. I went with Missouri as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and head to break. Uh, we've taken a look at the south and the west. Uh, when we get, come back from break, we'll go ahead and look at the east bracket. Welcome back to the SEC Sports Guys. Going to go ahead and take a look at the East Bracket, starting with Syracuse will be taking on UNC Asheville. Kansas State will be taking on Southern Miss. Vanderbilt and Harvard will be taking off together in the first round. Wisconsin will take on Montana. Cincinnati will be facing Texas. Florida State taking on St. Bonaventure. Gonzaga will be taking on West Virginia and Ohio State versus Loyola. Uh, Jason, we'll go ahead and start. Uh, Vanderbilt, Harvard featuring the uh, academic matchup for uh, round one. Uh, briefly talking about Vanderbilt picking up the SEC championship, um, and I picked them. I want to point that out as well, that I picked them to win it. But uh, like we talked about before the show, 
all that's not going to matter unless they win the tournament. But uh, let's talk about this game a little bit. Vanderbilt making the tournament and uh, playing Harvard. Vanderbilt's just been absolutely, absolutely on fire. And I was going to give you some credit there for the pick, but obviously you still you I didn't give yourself the limelight. But Vanderbilt's a team who, who's just been playing great the last two weeks. Kentucky was just a high, high heavy favorite going into the NC, uh, actually the SEC tournament. Everybody thought Kentucky was going to win, and then v Vanderbilt pulls off the upset here. I think that the uh, the win for Vanderbilt really gives them a boost of confidence going into the tournament here in the NCAA gives them a five seed which is a which is a great a great seed going into to the tournament and then they get they get a matchup with Harvard so you got two of the best academic academic schools got the brain bowl going on here but Harvard's had a good year as well uh, Tommy Amaker is the uh, head coach there former Duke Duke player and assistant coach I think Vanderbilt gets it done here the first round I don't think they'll have any problem with Harvard uh, I think that the key for Vanderbilt I, I really think that Vanderbilt can make a solid run here I think Think that besides Kentucky, this is the one SEC team that I got my eyes on here as far as making a run. But they've got to con continue to shoot the ball as they have all, all season long, which I think they will. And they've got to rely heavily on their seniors. They got three seniors that have led them all season long. If they continue to do that, I see Vanderbilt going as far as they, you know, as far as they can go. All right, uh, Florida State coming in at number three seed. Just talk about that for just a minute. Florida State is the one team that has been the most impressive to me the last couple weeks of the season. They, you know, here early in the season in January, they knock off Duke and North Carolina in the same week, which is almost unheard of in the ACC. Then they get to the conference tournament, they knock off Duke in the semifinals, and then they do the same thing they did in January. They beat North Carolina. They beat Duke and North Carolina in a span of 36 hours to win the ACC championship. So this is uh, Florida State's first. A ACC championship uh, in school history. I think that, you know, obviously they're on a remarkable run here. I, I see them continuing that as a three seed here in the NCAA. NCAA tournament. I think they can make a run as, as well. And I, I like both of the Vanderbilt and Florida State in this region. I think that both of them can make a strong run in the tournament. All right. We'll go ahead and make our pick. Syracuse taking on uh, UNC Asheville. I'm going to go with Syracuse. Syracuse. Okay. Uh, Kansas State, Southern Miss. Who are you going with? You know, Southern Miss is a team who's, who's played very well. Got got beat by Memphis there in the conference tournament. Uh, but I think that in the end, I think Kansas State's going to be a little too strong, too athletic for Southern Miss. Got Kansas I too State. Will. Yeah, me too. Kansas State. Oh, I don't have all that. But <coughs> Vanderbilt, Harvard, uh, I think you made your pick a little bit early going to Vanderbilt here. Uh, I also am going to go with Vanderbilt. What a surprise. Uh, Wisconsin and Montana. Four seed and 13 seed, who do you got? Yeah, I think this is a, a intriguing matchup here. I think in the end, uh, Wisconsin, you know, big guys down low, they're going to look to get the ball inside. Got two two huge guys, 1'6", 10", 1'6", 11". I think they'll take advantage of that size and get it done. All right, and I'm going to go with uh, Wisconsin as well. Uh, Cincinnati taking on Texas. Who do you have? Yeah, Cincinnati's been a team who, who struggled most of the year, came on strong here, and Texas just been kind of up and down as well. So these two teams are looking for consistency. I think in the end, I think Cincinnati uh, is going to try to dictate the pace. They want that fast-paced game. I, I don't think Texas can keep up. All right, I too went with Cincinnati. Uh, Florida State, uh, St. Bonaventure. Um, I don't think it's any contest here. Florida State. Yeah, Florida State. All right, keep rolling. Gonzaga, West Virginia. Who do you have? I like this game here. I like Gonzaga has been a team uh, who's been, you know, the last couple of years come into the tournament, win some games, make make people notice. A lot of people know about Gonzaga now. I think uh, Gonzaga coming into this year has not been as good as they have uh, recently. The 25 and six still a good record, but I think West Virginia is a team who uh, is gonna is gonna be ready. I think they're very athletic. I got West Virginia over Gonzaga. A lot of people probably not picking that way. You might not either. But not a chance. Gonzaga got them in round one. Right, here you go. Uh, Ohio Ohio State and Loyola, um, Ohio State number two seed, 15 seed. Yeah, no problems here, Ohio State. Ohio State as well. Uh, when we come back from break, we'll take a look at the uh, Midwest region. Welcome back to the SEC Sports Guys. Going to go ahead and take a look at the Midwest region. Starting with North Carolina, we'll be taking on Lamar, uh, the winner of the Lamar-Vermont game. Creighton will be taking on Alabama. Temple will be taking on the winner of the California-South Florida game. Michigan will be taking on Ohio. San Diego State will be facing off with NC State. Georgetown will be playing Belmont. St. Mary's will be playing Purdue. And Kansas will face off with Detroit. Uh, Jason, we'll go ahead and start. Alabama getting into the tournament here. Uh, they will take round one with Creighton. Um, just talk about this game a little bit and Alabama making it. Yeah, I think this is a very good coaching job by Anthony Grant this season. Alabama has been a team who, who's been very, very good all year long, but they haven't had their – you know, they've had their very – 
fair share of struggles this year. You had four guys, four starters suspended for various reasons throughout the year. Uh, they get three of the four, three of the four back. Uh, Trevor Ellerford still suspended for Alabama, but I think the big the big uh, guy for this team has been Jamichael Green inside, uh, native of Montgomery, Alabama. I think that he's been very good for this team, getting a nine seed, which is kind of tough, kind of tough coming in because if you're the eight or nine seed, as we talked about earlier in the show, you know you're going to play that one seed in the second round. But regardless, this is the first time Alabama has been in the NCAA tournament in, in a few years now, so a very good accomplishment there by Anthony Grant and his team. All right, I want to talk also about the San Diego. State NC State game. Um, talk a little bit about this matchup and uh yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, I think NC State's been a team that I've had my eye on all year long. I think this is a team that's fun to watch. Uh, a lot of people, you know, may or may not know that uh, Mark Godfrey is the coach there. He's a former Al former coach at Alabama. He's done an excellent job in his first year, uh, first year at NC State. Had had them have have had them ready to play all year in the ACC. Uh, they've taken on uh, North Carolina, Duke, Florida State, and all these, and they, and they've come come to play each and every, each and every game. So I think this is a team who, you know, a big accomplishment getting into the NCAA tournament as an 11 seed. But I think they're also a team that could, you know, potentially potentially uh, get a win or two here in the tournament as well. All right, I also want to talk about the uh, number three seed Georgetown taking on 14 seed Belmont. Just talk about this game a little bit and uh, Belmont, 27 wins this season. It's got to mean something, but yeah, Belmont's had a heck of a year. Uh, Belmont's out of Nashville, Tennessee, so a uh, little bit close to home here being in the South. Uh, Belmont's, you know, as you said, 27 wins in the season, won their conference championship, got in the tournament. Very, very good accomplishment there. They're going to run into a Georgetown team who's not the Georgetown of, of years past. They're, they're not as good as they've been before, but still a solid team. That's going to be a tough matchup for Belmont, but, you know, you got to give all the credit in the world to Belmont and winning the conference championship and getting in there. All right, let's go ahead and make our picks in the Midwest. Uh, start with uh, number one seed North Carolina taking on that winner Lamar Vermont game. Does it even matter? Yeah, no problems here. I think the big thing for North Carolina is, is rebounding from that, that Sunday loss to Florida State in the ACC championship game. Get that you know sour taste out of their mouth and get ready here for the big tournament. I don't think they're going to have any problems rebounding. No. I think North Carolina will take care of it. Uh, Creighton, Alabama. Yeah, I think this is a very intriguing matchup, especially here locally. we got a lot of fans that are going to be interested in that game. Uh, to give you a little bit about Creighton, Creighton's a team that, that shoots the three ball well, very guard-oriented, not much of an inside game. So Alabama with Jamichael Green, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to have to really take care of the inside game, get the ball inside to Jamichael Green, let him have a big let him have a big game. He's already your best player, so you've got to focus in on him, crash the boards, win the rebounding battle. If they win the rebounding battle, Jamichael Green, has a solid game inside. I don't think they'll have a problem with Creighton, but Creighton is a very good three-point shooting team, so they're going to have to take the three ball away from Creighton. If they can do that, I like Alabama in this game. Right, I'm going to go with Creighton in a close one. Um, tough pick there, but I'm, I'm glad Alabama made the uh, tournament, snuck in there, and uh, like you said, they've come over a lot of problems that, throughout the season to make it in, and, uh, but I think Creighton's going to pick up this one in a close one. Uh, Temple taking on the winner of the California-South Florida game. Um, does it even matter? Actually, I think it does. Okay. Uh, Temple's had a very good year, 24 and 7 in the year uh, in the Atlantic 10. I think that you know they've had a good year, but the winner, uh, as you said, California and South Florida. If South Florida comes out of that game, South Florida is a team who, who if you look at their record, 20 and 13, not the most impressive, but you got to look at who they lost to. They have played the big boys all year long. They have not, you know, they have not been scared in scheduling. They've played the big guys. They've gone out and played the tough teams on the road. This is a a senior laden group who is very very strong has the experience I think they could give Temple a game so I, my pick is, is kind of iffy here if South Florida comes through I got the upset over Temple if it's California I see Temple getting the win over California all right good good I got Temple either way oh, just going there Michigan and uh, Ohio four seed and 13 seed who do you have yeah, I think Michigan takes care of business here. Michigan's been a team who's played, you know, very, very well the last couple of weeks. I, I see them continuing that into the second round over Ohio. All right, uh, I got Michigan as well. Uh, the NC State, uh, San Diego State, we talked about this game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. NC State's been a, a – you know, impressive team for me all season long. I'm going to stick with them on my pick here in the first round. I think they get to the second round tough, 
tough matchup in the second round, but I, I get them out of the first round here. All right, I too have NC State. Uh, we also talked about the Georgetown Belmont game, three seed and a 14 seed. Who do you have in this one? Yeah, I think Belmont's had a great year, as we said, you know, 27 wins on the year. I think it stops here, though. I think Georgetown is just too big. I think they're going to dominate inside, dominate the rebounding. I see the smile on your face. I think you're going Belmont, but I'm going to have to go Georgetown here. You're right, I'm going Belmont. They've had a great season. It's going to continue past round one as well. Uh, might not make it past round two, but they will make it past round one. Uh, Purdue and St. Mary's, seven seed and a 10 seed. Who do you have here? Yeah, a lot of people probably don't know about St. Mary's team out of California. They, they are usually, you know, very, very good, very well coached team. I got St. Mary's over, over Purdue. Purdue's probably the bigger name, the bigger conference, but I've got St. Mary's here. Yeah, I don't know much about them either. I'm going with Purdue on this one. We'll see. Kansas, uh, two seed taking on 15 seed Detroit. Um, Upset here or what? No, I don't think so. I think Kansas is just too athletic, too strong. Uh, Kansas is a team who's second, you know, got the two seed here in the Midwest, but I think they're a team that's very vulnerable here. So I think if we see a St. Mary's or a Purdue coming out of the first round, I think that could be the first big upset here in the Midwest. All right. I have Kansas in this one. Uh, I want to talk about it a little bit. Um, was the controversy as much this year with teams in and out? Um, and maybe talk about some of the teams that made it in the tournament you don't quite think they should have made it or some of the teams that got left out. Yeah, I think the people who really sit, sit down and study basketball, I think if you look at a lot of the you know the shows like ESPN and all of them who break the brackets down, I don't think you've seen too much complaining this year. Uh, one team who's got a little bit of a complaint, maybe not a complaint, but one team that was looking to get a seed that did not was Mississippi State out of the SEC. We've covered them on this show all, all season long. But the thing about Mississippi State, I, I agree with the com committee here not putting them in because Mississippi State has just folded the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. They started so strong here in the conference season. We're just beating everybody, one of the best road teams uh, in the SEC. But these last three weeks uh, has just been miserable for them. They get beat by Ole Miss, who's not in the tournament. They get beat by Auburn, who's not in the tournament. Too many bad losses there, I think, is what doomed Mississippi State. They could have come back in the, in the uh, SEC tournament and you know kind of proven themselves to get that shot, but they bow out in the second round as well. So I, I don't think that they deserve the seed. They would be the only one, especially here locally in the SEC, who would have any legitimate argument. But I think overall, I think you know most most of there's there's several teams in the tournament that I don't agree with seeding. I think they were too high or too low. But as far as who's in, who's out, I think the committee got it right this year. All right, uh, for the viewers that uh, might not quite know how they pick the teams for the tournament, just break that down a little bit and explain how the how the community gets together and picks this? Well, this, the tournament used to be 64 teams. Two years ago, the NCAA came in and added four more teams to give you 68. There's 32 conferences in the in the uh, NCAA for basketball, and what happens is they have the regular season. You get your seeds for the regular season, then you play your conference tournament at the end. That conference tournament, the winner of the conference tournament, each of the 32 conferences has an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. So that's why you have your teams like your Murray State, your Belmont, those those teams that we talked about. So you get the 32 that way, then you get left with 36, and they call that the, the at-large bids. And what that is is they pick, from the last 36 spots there, they pick the top 36 teams. And that's where you see, you know, the Dukes, the Carolina, Alabama, people who did not win their win their conference but had a good enough season the regular season to, to get in. So that's how they get the 68. And, and once they get the 68, it's just a matter of giving different teams the different seeds and matching them up against each other. All right. All right, we're going to head to our last break of the uh, show. When we come back, we'll take a look at college baseball, looking at the standings, and as we head into uh, opening weekend of SEC play. Welcome back to the SEC Sports Guys. Wrap up today's show. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the SEC standings, starting with the East. Kentucky, 13-0. Florida, 12-1. South Carolina, 10-1. Georgia coming in 11-2. Tennessee at 9-3. And, and Vanderbilt rounding out the East at 4-8. Going ahead and take a look at the West, at the number one spot in Mississippi State at 12-2. Uh, Arkansas, LSU, and Ole Miss all coming in at 11-2. Auburn sitting at 8-6. And, and then Alabama at 5-7. Uh, Jason, we're heading into, uh, we got a few games leading up this week, but uh, heading into SEC play uh, starting this weekend, starting on Friday. Uh, go ahead and talk, talk about uh, the teams that we're opening up with. Yeah, it's, it's 
been a couple weeks now that baseball has been playing. It's hard to believe that they're in the conference season, but you know, conference season does start this weekend, so you're going to start seeing the East and the West kind of take form here, getting into the SEC tournament later in the year at Hoover. Here's your matchups for the first week. You got Alabama traveling to Arkansas, Auburn playing at Ole Miss, Tennessee taking on Georgia in Athens, Vanderbilt traveling down to Gainesville to take on Florida, South Carolina going to Lexington to take on the Wildcats, and lastly uh, at eight o'clock on Friday night the last game of the night is Mississippi State traveling to LSU all right that's a look at uh, college baseball uh, we hope that you'll join us next week as we'll continue to look at the bracket uh, the round one will be over with and we'll move on in through the bracket as well uh, and thank you so much for joining us this week on the SEC Sportscast